If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm checking the release clearance for the B1 brake band piston. And I'm using my special tool to do it. You can see right here, here it's all the way out. And look at how much the piston is traveling before the B1 brake band grabs a hold of that drum right there. Just using a little bit of torque. I'm using a small ratchet here. You can see you don't want to be using a big ratchet when you do this because you got to kind of feel it. Now, the question is, why am I doing this? First, I want to explain why I'm using this tool. Uh, some of you are going to say, well, Kent, why don't you just push on this and then you can check how much clearance you have before that brake band engages. Well, <laughs> if you've never worked with one of these, I mean, I've got, the, I've got this up against my chest. And, you know, how are you going to measure that? You can get it to move. So if you don't have anything else, at least make sure it's moving. Because if there's no clearance, when that brake band releases, it's going to be rubbing on that drum all the time and it will get hot. So you definitely have to have some release clearance there. And the amount in the manual they say it should be, it should be 1.8 to 2.5 millimeters. Now, how am I going to measure that using this tool? I should mention right now that the procedure to do this is in a number of different manuals that you'll find online concerning the 722.3. It requires a special tool. Here's your special tool here. And it has you set this up so you turn that bolt in and you measure how many threads it goes in until you hit the bottom, which is going to give you a torque of one newton meter. So this is a special tool I can't make. It's just it'd be too expensive because I don't have enough of these covers to make a tool. So I figured out a way to use the tool, the same tool. It shows it here. This is a tool. My design is a little bit different than this which lets you get the pressure off these springs and actually remove the B1 piston. So we're going to use the same tool now to check that release clearance. So the cover right now is all the way out against the snap ring. And you got to make sure that's the case when you're taking your measurement. And if you look, that cover is almost perfectly flush with the outside edge of the transmission case. Now, if you're thinking fractionally better than metric, this is going to be a little bit more than a sixteenth of an inch, between a sixteenth and three thirty seconds of an inch. This is about 85 thousandths, so you can see what you're looking at here. Just a little bit over a sixteenth of an inch if you're going to do this visually, but we're going to use a digital dial caliper to measure how much this cover is going to move in before I Feel it, and I'm going to emphasize feel it. That's where you're tightening down to one newton meter to the point where that brake band is engaging the drum. So I want you to follow along, watch closely as I run this piston in, and I'll let you guess how much. See if you can see, is that a sixtieth of an inch or is it more? Okay, there I am. I'm just engaging that brake band on the drum. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> That's a little more than a sixteenth. It might even be a little bit more than three thirty seconds of an inch. Let's take a measurement. Let's make sure we're zeroed out. Now notice I have to hold this caliper right on the edge there. And then come up here, we're going to set this to zero. And then I'm going to extend this out. There it is. Read it. Can you see that? 3.9 millimeters. Well, it's supposed to be 2.5 max. As we kind of guess, we have too much travel here. I need to point out, if you're using one of these dial calipers, you have to put this on where the just outside edge touches this housing because the cover plate is curved. If you don't do that, you won't get the proper reading. So I'm going to move that in. There it is, 3.9. Now for a little history lesson on these B1 pistons. 
I think when they first came out with a 722.3 transmission, 1981, probably up through the mid 1980s, you could get these in different lengths. See, this has two bands, this has three bands. If I look at this this way, you can see there's ever so slightly a difference there. And I think after a while, you know, the Mercedes and mechanics were saying, I, don't, I can't have half a dozen of these in my toolbox to set that release clearance. So I think it, probably around 86, 87, they came up with this revision where they allowed the pin to be removed from the base and you could get different washers to put in there. So look at how much you could bury that. Let's see what that is. That might be 2.5. Huh, 2.9. So you have quite a bit of variance here if you get different shims, different washers. And then finally, I think it was 1990 or 91, they came up with a self-adjusting <laughs> B1 piston assembly. It actually worked like a hydraulic lifter. It would self-adjust. You wouldn't have to worry about this. Now, I recently did a search, worldwide search for these. They're no longer available. Mercedes doesn't have them. You might be able to find one somewhere, someplace. But at this point, you're going to have to deal with either this type using different size washers or try to find the right length early style B1 piston. So we're going to pull this one out here because we know it's too short. And we're going to try to find one that will give us just enough length to get the proper clearance. When you're installing your B1 piston, there's a couple things I need to caution you about. Number one, this lip seal. Make sure you replace it. That's critical for pressure buildup that will push this piston in and engage the K1 drum. Now, if you notice, the lip has to go out. Do not reverse this and put the lip in. Uh, if the lip goes in, you're going to have a transmission that's got, not going to shift properly. So what I went looking for was a piston that's about two millimeters longer, just maybe a little bit less. This is the one that came out, and this is the one that proved to be the closest. You can see the length there. So this is approximately two millimeters longer than this one's gonna bring us right down close to the release clearance that we're looking for. So now we're going to install this one and recheck clearance. Notice here I've installed the new O-ring and lubricated that. I've lubricated this lip seal right here. And we're going to run this in. You can start it by hand and get it down in there to where you make sure it's engaging. Once you're sure it's engaged, only then should you apply the power tool. While running this in with the power tool, I'm going to guide it with my left hand. I don't want to bind it up in there. It can damage the seal. So just be careful. See that? I'm wiggling it. Ease it in until it stops. Now we're going to put the ring in. If you can't get the ring in, it probably means you don't have enough release clearance. So we're going to double check this. There we go, now we're in. Okay, now we can take another measurement. So I'm gonna cross my fingers here. <laughs> they say the proof is in the measurement. Okay, let's, let's check this out. Okay, we're gonna put that right on the edge, right there. And then I'm gonna move that carefully in. Look at that, let's take a look. We got 2.44 and maximum is 
So we're good. <laughs> I don't know how you would do this without either this tool or the factory tool shown in those repair manuals. <laughs>